This is part one in developing a plugin using the Curity plugin SDK. To simplify this, we've created a Maven archetype repository. The repo contains archetypes for several different types of plugins. In this example, I'm going to use an authentication action. So going into this folder, palm XML contains the artifact ID that we need in order to generate um, an authentication action plugin. So out of the palm XML for the type, we grab the artifact ID, provide that as the artifact ID in the command to generate the plugin. We also give it our own ID as well as a plugin name. Running this generates the plugin. For LS here, my example auth action generated from the ID. We can go into that directory and see that we have a readme, a palm, and a source directory for this new plugin. Let's switch to IntelliJ, or you can use any other ID of your choice. I'm going to open this project here now. First, we can open up the generated Palm XML. Note here that the name and artifact ID comes from our settings when we created the plugin. This has a slightly outdated version of the Curity plugin SDK, so I'm going to change that and then refresh, reload Maven. In a terminal, you can now run MVN package to build this plugin. Obviously, it doesn't do anything yet, but we can then see the generated jar of the plugin in the target directory. This is the jar that we need to deploy to the Curity Identity Server. We'll look at that a little bit later. Let's take a look at the source of the plugin itself. First, we have our specific action descriptor that implements the authentication action plugin descriptor interface. It has a get authentication action method that returns the, the given, in this case, authentication action class. There's also a get plugin implementation type method that returns the ID of the plugin itself. This needs to be a unique ID across all the plugins that are deployed into the Curity Identity Server. Finally, the get configuration type method returns the authentication action configuration class that is specific to this action that we're developing here. So let's take a look at the configuration. There's a configuration parameter here in the code already. As an example, it has a description, a type, and a method name. We can change this. I'm going to make this get in parameter instead. We can add more configuration parameters to this, perhaps. Um, String you can change the data type too. You can, for example, do um, a boolean as well. There's other components in the system as well. Um, we can, in the configuration, for example, do an HTTP client here. Um, I have to import this class, though. This would then make an HTTP client available in our action. So this could be used to, for example, call an external service, web service, 
um, something like that. There's other underlying components that can be accessed in the configuration here as well. And as you can see, the first two configuration parameters has an annotation, a description annotation, which will give um, a text in the UI describing the configuration in itself. The get demo string parameter method name will essentially translate into demo string parameter in the UI. The is enabled turns into an on and off switch flag in the in the UI for the configuration in itself as well. So that's the descriptor and the configuration. Now if we switch to the actual action, this is where we implement the action itself, the logic of what happens when the action executes and triggers, right? So in the action, we do have access to the configuration. And so we can here define, for example, an um, variable my int that represents the int that we had in the configuration, get demo int parameter. So now we can use the value of this from the configuration. Similarly, we can do that for the HTTP client as well that was defined in the configuration. This is then when we can implement some logic and code to make a call out to an external service or something like that. We can also, pretty useful, define a logger here. I'm going to use a logger to just showcase that we pick up the uh, value from the configuration. So now with the logger, we can write it to error just to make it show up nicely in the log. So this action as of right now is pretty simple. It will essentially just log the int parameter or the int value from the configuration into the log file and it's just going to return a successful authentication result and all of the attributes from the authentication context. Now I'm going to switch to the terminal and build this plugin. To deploy this plugin, we create a subdirectory into the plugins directory of the security identity server. So start off with making a directory here under IDSVR. USR share plugins make one called demo and then we can copy our jar into that directory Then I'm going to jump into the bin directory here. I'm going to enable debug logging. Not that we necessarily have to, but start the server. When the server is up and running, we can log into the admin UI and go to the authentication service. That's where we have authentication actions. So I don't have any, so we can create a new. My example action is our custom action that we've worked on. Give it a name, select this, and choose next. 
now we can see all the configuration parameters that we set in the in the configuration so we can do and assign an HTTP client here, set an integer value for this int parameter, configure a string. As you can see, the is enabled is a boolean, so it's a flag for on or off. When that's configured, we can assign it to an authenticator. I have a simple username password authenticator here commit the changes to the system to demo this and showcase it I'm going to use OAuth tools simply run a flow here that triggers the authenticator the action now executed in the background if we switch back to the terminal and scroll up we're going to see a red line here somewhere here we go my example action, it's an error. That's how we logged it at, what level we logged it at. And you can see that we're logging the integer number that we had in the configuration. And that concludes part one of developing a plugin with the Curity plugin SDK. In part two, we'll take a look at request handlers and the use of templates in an authentication action plugin as well. So make sure to tune into that if that's of interest. Thanks for listening and watching.